My name is Jim Prentice. I am with the National Law Enforcement Officer Museum. I'm an educator. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the L3 Harris Patrol Sim Simulator. Uh, this uh, unit was donated by L3 Harris. Uh, gives us the opportunity to give uh, our audience, which is uh, civilians for the most part, an opportunity to uh, be in the uh, world of a police officer as far as driving, uh, pursuit driving, uh, and uh, things like that. For the police officer out there, what this offers is a chance to get into driving, making decisions, critical decisions when they're driving a, a police vehicle uh, and putting themselves into a, a situation where they have to drive carefully or fast, but it's in a risk-free environment. The driving simulator itself is set up just like a normal vehicle where you have a seat with the, that can be adjustable wherever it needs to be adjusted, steering wheel, um, the uh, windshield wipers work, the lights work, a gear shift, you start it like a regular normal car. Uh, so everything in here is uh, you know just like a normal vehicle to give you the feel of real life. Um, and as you move over this way, you also have all the police equipment. Okay, and with the simulator, you also have all the patrol car features, which down here you have your siren box, which will give you your 360 lights, and also your sirens, which are different ones. You have the uh, well, the yelp, the high-low, and an air horn. So you can be in a realistic situation where you can change your pitch. You can change, you know, we use the air horn depending on what the traffic's doing. Uh, the microphone is here. Uh, it's on a magnet magnet holder right here so that you can communicate with communications or during the training, you can communicate with the uh, supervisor, whoever's running the training. And then you have the MDT, the uh, mobile data terminal, which officers use. It also show your call for service. You can run tags, license plates, and it'll give you information on that. Um, and just overall, any information that's going on around you, you can pull up on the terminal. And as you look around, this gives you a three-dimensional look of what you're driving when you're in the simulator. All the mirrors work. So if a vehicle is approaching from the rear, you can see them in the side view mirror or the rear view mirror. Uh, so it's as realistic as you can get it um, to, a, to being in a regular car. Uh, it gives you that feel all the way around. First, we're going to give you an acclimation, which is basically going to let you drive down the road just to get a feel for the car and how it turns, how the brakes work. The thing you have to watch with the brakes is they don't, you don't really feel the sensation so much at slow speeds. So you feel like you're not stopping and the next thing you know, you really stop. So you'll get a feel for it. So we'll give you a chance to do that. Um, and we'll also, some of the weather conditions will change a little bit. So we need you to drive with the weather conditions. The vehicle set up that if you try to make a turn, if you're going to rain at 30 miles an hour, they're gonna spin out. So you need to be careful with that. Um, the other thing we wanna tell you uh, with this system is a thing called SAS which is simu simulator acquired uh, sickness, okay? So if you start feeling dizzy or anything, let me know, we can stop the scenario. Um, there's not much we can do with it. It's just something that your brain does. Um, so just be careful with that. If you start getting dizzy or something, and ways to defeat that is to keep scanning. Don't look at one thing all the time. If you keep staying straight, that's it's like a video game. Just keep kind of moving around. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have you, when one minute start the car, you're gonna drive about 30, 35 miles an hour. You're gonna drive straight down the road. And when you get to street signs and things like that, I want you to look up. I want you to tell me what street you're on and what you're crossing. And then I'll give you directions on which way I want you to go from there. Awesome. Okay? Sounds All right. Let's so go ahead and start the car for me. And when you're ready, you can put it in drive. All right. And 35 miles an hour. And when you come up to your first street, let me know what street you're on and what street you're crossing. All right, I'm on Fifth Avenue crossing G Street. Okay. So when we get this simulation going with the rain, you're going to want to slow down a little bit so that you can control the vehicle better. F Street is what I'm crossing. Okay. And what we're going to have you do at the light, we're going to have you make a right turn at the light. Okay. And some of these uh, weather conditions are built into this program, so we have to kind of deal with them. All right, I'm turning right onto E Street. Okay. And then at your next light, you're going to make a left hand turn. I'm on E Street crossing 6th Avenue. Right. Turning left onto 7th Avenue at E Street. All right, and for this one, we're going to pull over to the right and pull in the parking space. It's just going to go stop once you get over there. 
And at that point, you can go ahead and put the bar apart and turn off the ignition. All right, and stand by for a minute. Okay, uh, now that you've gotten a uh, chance to just get a feel for the car and how it responds, uh, we're going to go ahead and let you see what it feels like to be a police officer riding on a call. Okay, so in this scenario, you're going to get a call from the dispatcher after you start the car, and they're going to call you 518 will be, your, not yet, just hang tight, uh, 518 will be your call sign. Uh, she's going to let you know what you need to do, um, and from there, you will respond. Remember, when we do this, you want to make sure you get there. So you want to take it to drive at your speed. Do not try to overdrive the car. Um, and, you know, anything you got, like red lights, you can slow. You need to slow down, make sure it's clear before you clear that intersection. You need to listen to the radio and respond to any calls that you get while this is going on. So in this scenario, you're going to get a call to assist your uh, an officer that's down on uh, Fifth Avenue, a little further down the street. He's out with a fight, and you're going to get a call to run priority to assist him. So what you do is go ahead and you're going to run priority and to listen to radio, respond as things happen. Okay? okay. All right. And you remember where all the lights and sirens are at and how to work them. Okay. And when you're ready, go ahead and start the car. You'll get your call. 518 dispatch. Respond to the intersection of 5th and H Hotel to assist 515 for report of a fight in progress. Level 3 emergency equipment is authorized. How copy? Go ahead and respond as dispatcher. Copy that. I am headed eastbound on this avenue. 518, I have you en route at 1301. Break 527, go with your traffic. Dispatch 527. Final stop, 7th and Alpha. New York tag, Bravo Alpha Victor 0427. Bravo Alpha Victor 0427 on a black Jeep. Occupied two times. Down there, you're going to pull in behind the cruiser on your right hand side. Dispatch 515, show myself at 518. I see a one white male on the ground at the crash site in the intersection. Okay, go ahead put it in park. Turn off the lights and sirens. Okay, that was very good. Uh, let's we'll talk a little bit about what happened in that scenario. So as you're driving down the road, a lot of cars pulling out in front of you and things like that. So you have to make sure you're watching all the vehicles because nobody watched for you. Uh, the one thing you can always do is you can change the pitch on your siren, maybe just to get out of that same mode. Um, so as the call was going on, there was a, uh, another officer that called out with a traffic stop. Do you remember what the tag number was on that vehicle? I remember it was a New York tag. Very good. All right. And then after that, you had shots fired. Um, so you guys were responding to help him out. Do you also remember where the officer called out and said he was shot? What part of his body he said he was shot? Leg. Very good. So these are the kind of things that and if, when you're a new officer or someone that hasn't driven well, the multitasking part of having to listen to the radio, 
drive to keep people, to keep yourself and other people safe and just the maneuverability, it, it's hard to do. Um, so you did really well, and, you know, listening to all the things that were going on. Um, so that's, that's really good. You did a good job staying over there. Uh, the only other thing, when you go through some of the traffic lights, even if they're green, you might want to slow down a little bit just because your partner made it through. You may not, and somebody may not hear you, but very good. Uh, the L3 system is also very easy to use and instructor for the instructor is a, a great tool to have. You can start off as easy as what type of vehicle you want to put your officer in. Um, these systems are also used for truck driving and any other type of driving, but for us it would be law enforcement vehicles. Um, and with that, you have the opportunity as the instructor to change a lot of factors in this. You can change the weather. You can change the day or night, how dark you want it, how light you want it. You can have equipment failures within the vehicle as far as flat tires, engine, something happens with the engine. Um, and you also can even, as far as put in alcohol consumption to give people an idea of how they control a vehicle when they have different types of uh, levels of alcohol in them. It comes with many programs, but you also have the opportunity if you want to, to write your own programs into this to fit the scenarios that you want your officers to go into. Um, the, uh, as far as any studies with it, there's been a few studies out there showing that uh, it's about a 12 to one uh, value as far as how much money is spent less spent due to uh, accidents with officers that have been trained on the L3 Harris. Um, so overall, this is a great tool for law enforcement. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think it would help out in the future tremendously.